Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya of JSA, coming to you from Virtual Metro Connect 2021. Joining me today, my good friend, Kevin Rocks. He's the EVP of Sales and Marketing at Southreach Networks. Kevin, welcome to JSA TV. Jamie, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. And thanks so much again, Kevin, for joining us. So excited to catch up, especially on our virtual Metro Connect 2021 edition. So for our viewers who may not already know, can you tell us a little bit about Southreach Networks? Yeah, Southreach Networks is a, is a relatively new uh, carrier on the scene in, in the South Florida market. And the company was cobbled together by um, acquiring a number of different fiber-based assets that they're kind of leveraging to create what what we hope over time will become what we would like to become is really a formidable player throughout the entire southeast so currently today the company has uh we have our own fiber optic backbone from miami florida going up the east coast to jacksonville we also have some fiber access and fiber rights going into atlanta and we are targeting all of the various uh carrier ecosystem um clients so everyone from data center providers to hyperscalers to resellers to agents to municipalities consumers of dark fiber consumers of ethernet lit services consumers of dedicated internet access that's really our customer base and there's a lot going on as you're well aware just on a macro level that uh south florida in particular has become kind of a growth place in general it seems like a lot of people i don't know if it's entirely weather related or it's pandemic related, but it really is kind of in a bull market is that everybody wants to have a bolt hole, if not in Florida, somewhere in the south. So it's, it's a good place to be in terms of the trajectory of what the local economies are doing. And we're really excited to be uh, on the forefront of that. And being a small shop, we're, we're kind of we're not as bureaucratically driven as some of the others. So that really enables us to do a lot of things and be quick, be nimble, and be very responsive uh, to the carriers and the service providers that call upon us. Yeah, there, there's been a, an exodus, massive exodus from big cities like LA and New York, um, and going to some hot spots uh, for sure uh, in Florida and Texas. Um, people, uh, people wanting to leverage their you know at home, stay at home orders, and be in the the states that are. Um, uh, that, well, great weather and, and great taxes, and there's a lot of reasons for it, right? Um, a lot of but, compelling drivers, yes. Yeah, right. And uh, and for sure, Southreach Networks, um, I've been watching you guys uh, grow, um, and particularly your role there. You've just been with Southreach for, what, six months now as EVP of Sales and Marketing? Yeah, uh, I, came on, I came on board in mid-October, and it's it's been a whirlwind, so... As you're well aware, my my most of my career has been based in the Northeast market, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut throughout. So this is really the first time that I've uh, taken on a completely new geography. And I have to say in a very short span, um, I'm totally engrossed with what's going on down there that I'm like, wait a minute, I forgot about New York, right. you know, 60 Hudson Street and all that stuff. So that's kind of in the rear view, still have a, has a place in my heart, but uh, the focus is now down in South Florida, it's a really exciting place to be, a lot of different projects and things that we're tackling. And we look forward to more of the same. Yeah, and uh, and, and for sure, this has just been a incredibly crazy year. Um, Metro Connect, obviously now virtual this year, uh, just everything's different, especially since, you know, uh, typically, you know, middle of South Reach Network's home in Miami, you know, it's not to have, um, our usual Miami drinks, uh, you know, is, is a little sad. Um, but how do you, what do you hope to gain from the event this year? Well, the interesting thing is, is yes. So just kind of flipping back a little bit, when I came on board in mid-October, we still didn't really know where we would be in mid-February. Mm -hmm. So I was very hopeful that we were going to be able to pull off an in-person event and lovely to be at the Eden Rock and sitting around the pool, having great meetings. And uh, all of these Metro Connects in the past that I've been to have always been great because it's a very much a C-level type audience. It's very intimate. You can have lots of really great conversations, so much more so than you get at some of the more high trafficked uh, trade show events that we've had you know, throughout the calendar year that we're used to. But once we knew uh, 
guess a few weeks ago, the folks at Capacity notified us that they're going all virtual. We we're especially disappointed because it's right in our backyard. And I was kind of thinking, you know, we could probably do this thing outside. It's only a few hundred attendees. We'll do it on tents on the beach or what have you. But it wasn't to be. Um, but I look at this, Jamie, as, as building the foundation for ITW, right? So right now, um, that's that's hoping to be an in-person event. And that's really in four months time. So it's really not far down the road. What I really liked, and, and hats off to the capacity media folks for putting this thing together, irrespective of the environment that we're in right now, but they've got a lot of great lineup, great speakers. Uh, I've already had a number of uh, reach outs and outreaches in terms of meetings, a lot of up and coming, a lot of investors, a lot of people, everyone is just so eager to kind of make things happen. And thankfully in our industry, I think we're really blessed in that, you know, even because of the pandemic and less so it, it's just, we have, we, there's been the demand for communications continues to grow exponentially. So all we need to do, we just need to get in a room together so we can talk face to face and even grow it even further. So I, I hope that it's going to be a very successful show and I hope that we use it as a platform to build for the next in-person event. Yeah, well, there's definite tremendous buzz as we as we enter uh, enter into it next week over at Metro Connect and uh, and you know folks at capacity they never disappoint and for sure it's a lead up to ITW and just a few months away uh, and back in DC. So um, yes, back in DC. I'm very yeah. happy about that. I like I love the old hotel too, but uh, we'll take this new place. I think it's just over the border in Mar Maryland. Yeah. Uh, but it'll be nice. It's a train ride down for us, the folks in the Northeast, probably not too far from you. Yeah. And uh, just to see people, I guess the unfortunate aspect is a lot of the international folks that could have potentially attended, that's going to be a challenge for them. Because really, when you're at ITW, you're almost like a guest within your own country because there's so many international folks there. We'll miss that flavor. But if we can pull this off, then it, it could be the stepping stone to many more in-person events going through 2021 into next year. Yeah, uh, us Americans have to show up for sure. We have to show up in droves. Yeah, yeah. In numbers, yes. Indeed. All right, back to South Reach Networks though. I want to make yep. sure we get this in. Looking out sure. towards the rest of 2021, what can we expect? We can expect uh, a lot of uh, success-based builds. So in addition to having this fiber optic backbone, we have a lot of in, you know, ingress and egress, on-ramps and off-ramps that tie into a lot of the cable landing stations. And the traffic that is now going through up through South America, into a, a head end in Miami, up through Jacksonville, now with Virginia Beach and NJFX, it all goes up through Europe and out the other side and keeps coming back down. So we're kind of almost like a midway point in that traffic. So we want to continue to expand and do laterals off of our backbone to continue to do on ramps with these various cable systems. And there's some num a number of others that are coming on board in the very near term. So you'll probably see some press around that. Um, and we also want to expand laterals into the metros. So getting a little bit deeper into not just Miami, but Boca Raton, West Palm, uh, going up the coast to Jacksonville in particular. And what we're really excited about is the area in, in kind of central coastal Florida on the East Coast is a, somewhat of an underserved market in a very large populated state like Florida. So once you get past West Palm going north, before you kind of get up into the Jacksonville region, there's a lot of kind of gaps in that area in terms of service providers, access to fiber. So we're trying to utilize and leverage our backbone to get into some of the MDU multi-dwelling units, some of the homeowner associations, uh, utilities, municipalities supporting a lot of the 5G players in their cell tower site selection, things of that nature. So we're really excited about that as well. So between that and we do have an upcoming uh, press release coming out about some high capacity uh, offerings that we're gonna be having going just between the data centers. It's a data center focused product, which is 10G, 100G, connecting all the various data centers from Jacksonville to Miami. We're really excited about that press announcement, which is forthcoming. So those are just a few of the few of the things that we're looking to do this year. Uh, where can we go for more information on Southreach? Oh, sure. Well, srnetworks.net is our website. And I'm very easy, Kevin, first name dot last Kevin dot R O C K S at srnetworks.net. All of the information will be there. We're going to continue to post things on our blog site. We're going to be using a lot of social media. We'll be making these announcements about the about this new um, high capacity service we're offering between the data centers. Uh, we also have a flagship data center of our own 
at uh, 36 Northeast Second in Miami, which we kind of call as the annex to the NAP, which is a which is a you know diverse connected data center to the NAP of the Americas and some of the other uh, data centers that are intra-building within 36 Northeast Second. So that's some basic information on how to get a hold of us and any type of needs for Ethernet capacity, dedicated internet access, dark fiber. Uh, that's where you go. Love it. Absolutely. So exciting. Always great to uh, to learn what South Beach Networks is up to. But also you, Kevin, I'm so, uh, so excited to catch up. Thank you so much for your time. Likewise, and Jamie, thank you very much. Thank you to the JSA and a team. We love working with you guys. It's been a fantastic year thus far, and let's keep it going. Absolutely. Okay. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Happy networking. Mm -hmm.